Hey there, welcome to episode 5 of this Koala Sampler tutorial series and today what we're going to be looking at is important audio into Koala so that we can actually get started with some beats. Um, so what we're going to do, if you remember in the user interface uh, video, if we click on this mic button here, it gives us this little drop down menu and of course we want to choose import file because that's what we're trying to do. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into settings real quick. In the settings video I talked about how I use audio share so I've got that enabled. But if you don't own audio share as an app, I'm going to to turn it off just so that you can see what happens um, and when we click a pad it's going to open up uh, Apple's uh, files app and then we can just pick through the folders find wherever we've got our drum sounds whatever sounds we're looking for uh, and then import them into the app from there absolutely nothing wrong with that you don't need audio share at all but I do think audio share is a little bit neater and I'll show you audio share just because I can so let's close this out this is funny, it's a little bit tricky sometimes because the buttons are kind of right near each other. Um, if we go into settings and enable audio share again, then click OK. Now let's see what happens when I click pad. Opens the audio share app. And for me, this is just a bit of a nicer structure. Um, if I'm, you know, uh, sampling and doing stuff like that, all of those kind of files end up in here. Uh, and although it's a little bit messy at the moment, I can create folders and I can make it really neat. I can also do some basic editing as well because there's some like tools in here. As I say, I'm not affiliated with um, Audio Share, so I've got no reason to like sell you it. I just use it and I think it's pretty cool. So let's bring something into Koala. So let's take a drum break, it doesn't matter which one. I could preview it here if I wanted to, but I'm just going to import this one in. And now, of course, it's loaded it onto a pad. Uh, and I'll talk about the pads in a second. Now, in a recent update to Koala, what they did was they added in their sort of own file structure here. So under this little bit of white samples text, if we click that, it opens up another menu for us. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll come right back out of this because I need to show you a couple of things. Might take a second because this is loading from my uh, little uh, Kingston USB hub. Um, but this is the kind of screen you'd be greeted with initially. It allows us to set up um, access to like cloud storage. So if you've got all your samples stored online somewhere, we can do it via this. We can just add locations so we can add folders and things. And that's what I've done here. I've added this as a location. It's given it a strange title because actually on my little micro SD card, it's just called music files. I'm not sure why it's given it this strange long title, but it allows me to put that location in. Uh, and then if I click this, you can see all the samples I've got stored via my USB hub on my little micro SD card. And I actually use both of the structures because I find audio share is for all the things I've like sampled from Spotify or YouTube or things I've sent over from Ableton generally tend to end up in the audio share folder. And to save space because all of these sample packs add up to, you know, quite a good chunk of storage space. I don't want them on the iPad, so I have those set up through the USB hub uh, and I've just got easy access to everything that I need. Um, so that's a way of setting it up. Again, just to reiterate, everything that I'm showing you just because this is on the iPad works exactly the same on the iPhone. I can't vouch entirely for Android, but it has to be a very similar system, I'm sure. Um, actually, let's bring another sample in from here. Um, also, I should mention, when you open this up, you've got access to your songs, so any like songs that you've created and things in here. And also, they just give you a few sounds for free. Let's just pick one of them. Uh, let's pick like a chord, we'll do. Obviously, you can hear it as you play it through, and then bring it in, and it's now in the pad. So, before I sign off on this video, because that's pretty much all I want to talk about for like importing files this way, I just want to talk a little bit about the pads. If we want to get rid of something, we can just grab it and drag it up and you'll see this bin icon. We can just drag it. Yeah, it's gone. Uh, you can do that with multiple pads at the same time. So as many fingers as you've got free, you can just drag all the pads, shove them up. It's a nice quick way of like just clearing out your workspace, getting rid of anything that you don't want. Um, if we want to duplicate a pad, I can just grab it and drag it to the next pad wherever I want. It's just going to keep duplicating as many times as we need it. We've also got some options if we want to put a pad onto a pad. And when we do this, we get a little menu here. The first option is mix, which of course does exactly that. So it would just mix this like little chord and this drum loop. It would just completely mix them together. Doesn't give you options about where it mixes them. It's just gonna start both samples at the very beginning and mix them out. Um, that's useful when we get into talking more about like layering samples a little bit later on. 
and then we've got add to end and that's going to do that so where this drum loop stops if i drag this chord into here it's going to do the drum loop and then that little chord's going to play it's just literally going to stick it to the end of the sample uh, if i do swap you will see it just swaps the pads around um, and you know sometimes that's useful you're just trying to move uh, a few things around and that's pretty much it in terms of that the only other thing that was written on there was cancel and it's just to come back out of the menu so yeah hopefully uh, you've enjoyed that that's important files in the next video we're going to talk about uh, sampling from YouTube and Spotify using the inbuilt iOS like screen recording uh, yeah so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one take care